So welcome everyone to the next StreamZ community call. Uh, if the recording running and let's start with the first thing on the agenda, which is open issues and questions. Does anyone have anything uh, they want to raise or ask about or anything like that? I always wake up in the middle of the night with a dream that someone actually asked something at this point. Okay, I guess there will be more space for it later. And I opened, I added here a bunch of links for different PRs, which I think might be interesting to discuss and finish. First one is 5525. So I guess this was originally my idea that when using the deployment operator, we always uh, have to first check if we do some changes, whether the new pods were actually rolled out, the new replica set, and only then wait for readiness. And the idea was that, yeah, maybe this should be merged into the single readiness method to make sure that everyone does that and that we don't need two calls. But Tom, I think it sounded like you were not exactly in favor of that. So what should we do with it? Should we close it? I think Tom had to step away. So it might be worth um, coming back to this. Okay. Uh, oh, that sorry, case, he's back. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Tom, we were just talking about this merging wait for observed and wait for readiness in the deployment operator PR. Yes. I, if I remember correctly, it sounded like you are not necessarily that much in favor of it. So I wonder if we should simply close it and keep it as it is. Um. I think I I don't feel particularly strongly either way. I think I am um, I can't remember quite what I said now. I think I was somewhat in favor of it, but like I said, I don't feel very strongly, but I I did feel that the check on the um, that we were missing a check on the observed generation versus the metadata generation. Um, for at least one of the resource types that had uh, an observed generation and that that was something that we ought to fix. Okay, so I guess we should get back to it then. Yeah. Let me see if I can find it in the comments. Um, State full set. So I guess this is one of the lists of the possible ideas.
Okay, so hopefully that captures it. Jesus, why does this Zoom menu obstruct me from switching the tops? Okay, next PR is roll pots when the certificates change. So this is again, uh, Something for you, Tom. Is it something what you think we should merge then, or? I think I approved this. Yeah, I know. You, I see that you approved it, but I think we had some discussions on uh, on the chat about it. But so you are fine with this as a kind of, let's say, for the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy to. I'm happy to merge this and and um, have the abstraction over this contents of secrets as a, a to do. Okay. Then let's note it. Great. Next one five six oh nine. And yet again, that comes to you, Tom. I think you had some comments here, which should be resolved. But uh, yeah, I think it would be great if you can have a look if they are all okay now and approve it if if you are fine. Okay, with I must admit this one I don't remember, but um, I will have a look at that. It's uh, it's I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't insist on oh, your yeah, this necessarily one. unless you had on already some comments on it before. So that's just something to look into. Yeah, I'll the take a look. Next one is five, six, three, four. <sighs> Kafka streams replication factor. Is Tom on the call, other Tom? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and Alex isn't here, I guess. So, no, he's Tom. I think the idea which we had with Standa when we were discussing this is that I don't think the users should really care much about what the replication factor there is. And it seems that even with the minus one settings, it still in many cases defaults to one replica because that's really what Kafka has in default. And a lot of users don't change it. They just create the topics with more replicas but don't change the default settings. So I don't think that's, that necessarily helps. So where it falls down for me is, and then we get, fairly a lot of users coming to the Slack and asking, oh, hey, this is only one replica and it's not replicated. What should we do with it? Now, I think we, we wrote the software, so we should know what is the optimal replication factor for it. And we should either set it automatically so that the users, or we should basically set it automatically so that the users don't have to care about it. So I guess now the question is, what's the replication factor we want to have for these change log topics? So this is just for the topic operator? That's just for the topic store. operator and, and Stanislav, you might know it better, but I don't think it's the, it's the main topic. It's the internal change log topic used by the Kafka streams. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's just for that, yeah, then, you know, three minimum, or you could do some fancy logic of whatever, you know, whatever constitutes a, um, you know, if they've got five Kafka brokers, then maybe you do want to up it up, I don't know. Three is probably fairly safe. I mean, what, and then figure out what to do if they don't have three brokers for whatever reason, someone creates so, a cluster with two. So I think the code written by, by Standa is that, it takes the minimum of three and the number of brokers. So if they have just one broker, yeah. then it's just one replica, right? Not much yeah. else you can do. If it has three, then it's three replicas. If you would have five, then it would be three by default, which 
yeah, to be honest, I don't think the change log topic is critical. So I think three should be okay in most cases. Uh, yeah, in, uh, in Kafka 3, it's set to minus one now by default. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is that minus one defaults to one in most cases. Okay. Yeah, so I guess we can proceed with this PR then. So hang on, minus one means whatever the cluster default for replication factor is, and we're saying that most people don't set that, and so the default of that is one, and that's why this thing ends up as one. That's at least my experience, yes. I, if someone has different experience, yeah. I, is, I don't know if so, you saw something else in the in the Kafka community, for example. I'm just wondering whether we should inherit the Kafka default because obviously for a you know just a Kafka broker, it doesn't really know how big a cluster it's going to be a part of. So that's that's the only sort of possible default you can really have in Kafka for that. But in the context of AMQ streams, where we know how many brokers are in the cluster, and if it's not been set explicitly, should we make that three or, you know, um, min of three and the number of brokers in the cluster? Because that would be a better default for most streams of users, I would suggest. I guess that's interesting question. Tom Cooper's on mute if he's trying to talk. We still cannot hear you, Tom. Well, it's this stupid Zoom program. It's decided to minimize something to a window somewhere else and now I can't find, I couldn't find it. Yeah, sure. It has nothing to do with your Arch Linux, right? <laughs> <laughs> fine, absolutely fine. Stupid software. Um, no, um, I was just um, uh, mumbling pointless things under my breath. Um, no, I, I agree with Tom Bentley, actually. That surely would be better to just have minus one everywhere and then set the Kafka one to be, uh, to be the minimum of three and the broken number. So I guess the question is, is that too much breaking change? Well, this will have an impact and, uh, to, on the min ISR as well and uh, a few other settings. Or, or do you have to do it in two steps? So you have one release where it's, it's set explicitly, but set to whatever the current default is, and then we change the default so that then everyone can either remove it and take the new default or they can keep the old default if they want to. I think that's hard because we don't write the defaults into the Kafka CRs back. Yes. Yeah, I guess you'd have to update the CR, wouldn't you? I've... Because that's, that's a bit complicated with a lot of users using GitOps and so on. You... Yeah can't really, if you just update it in Kubernetes, it doesn't necessarily help much. I think it is worth considering um, this on a wider level though, because it might affect Kafka Connect as well. Because I know that we've definitely had people deploy Kafka Connects where they've chosen their config to not be, like they've chosen, for example, three replicas and they only have one broker because they're running a tiny system for some reason. So I wonder if, I don't think what I just said is the right answer, but I think it's worth considering at a wider level across all topics, not just streams. But it might be that we just say, this is the answer, but we should do it in every place if that's less breaking for the users. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, so there is a kind of. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying uh, uh, that there is a kind of same logic in the Stravinsky canary when the canary topic is created. Be, be, that is exactly the 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 um, the, the minimum be, between three and the number of brokers. But then, as Michael said, there is a, then uh, uh, so you have to tweak the mine ISR as well, which in the canary, for example, is the maximum between one and the replication factor minus one. So go ahead, Miguel. Yeah, so, so my point was, I uh, uh, think with these defaults, it really depends what are use case. If you want to deploy a, a dev cluster, you may be fine with one one everywhere. So I, I feel like you sort of need like, uh, as you would specify what sort of uh, uh, semantics or what sort of guarantees do you want your cluster? Like, is this a production cluster? If so, you need to have more than one replica and more than one min ISR, otherwise it's... <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, but I mean, they could still set the defaults explicitly in the Kafka CR. It's just what should should we inherit the Kafka defaults of one, even though that's kind of not really what we think of as best practice for, you know, for most topics, most of the time, most people want it replicated. And yet the defaults that we inherit from Kafka, at least in the past, haven't really done that. Um, on the other and, hand, uh, you know, users generally aren't setting these defaults themselves. Well, that's why I was thinking, like, do you want to introduce this idea of like, uh, uh, like a configuration mode? Like, say, I want to conf, you no, know, I want to configure it for uh, reliability. You know, or I want to get the the best recommended config, and then you would get three, and, you know, and two min ISR, and so not as user having to explicitly set the values, but just say, I want this profile because I know this is like the production profile. And, uh... Is it actually bad for the users if their replication goes from one to three? Because I think with this discussion, it would only go up, right? Or is it that because we're changing it from minus one to minimum of three, that it could change from like five to three? I don't think it'll change if it exists. Yeah, you, you can't reduce yeah. it. But, but if, it, it, so if they haven't set it and they're using the default, is the change in this PR such that um, the default before was minus one? And so if I'd configured my broker to have a default replication of five, then if we change the default to be three, I'll then get less replicas. Or is the default currently one and therefore we're just increasing it to three? So the default, I think, boundaries back, the default was one. Then we change it to minus one, but that still doesn't seem to help with the user issues. So that's why we are considering this. And the PR as it is written would ignore the default replication factor setting broker now. Because I was just thinking if if we thought the change could only result in them having more replicas, not less, then the only impact would be more resources, which they could change it back if they wanted to, but we're not impacting them in terms of losing replicas or have, if anything, it's going to be more reliable, not less reliable. Yeah, so, but then it's our application and our topic, right? So in a way we should know what it needs to be reliable. Yeah, I guess I was just suggesting maybe it isn't too much of a change for existing users as long as the replication factor goes up, not down. Right. So, so with this can. Yeah. If, you're, if you're creating replicas of many topics, how many partitions, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to run a top disk. So, so you need to distinguish two things, right? The PR as it is, it changed this only for the single topic used by the topic operator. It's kind of separate from Tom's idea to set the default to different defaults. Yeah, sorry. So I, I should have clarified the comment I made just now was uh, on this PR specifically, 
if it's just this one PR, if we're sure that it will only result in replication going up, then maybe it's okay for us to say, well, we know better. And perhaps this is what you should have been set to, but is there a risk it would go so down? For, for existing users, I don't think it will do anything because the topic already exists. For new users, it might be that there will be cases where someone has the default replication factor set to five, for example. And by this PR, we basically override it for this particular topic and set it to three. But that would be a new user, not existing user. So what do we do with this? And there comes the silence. I guess if we think this is better than what it is already, then do we merge this and then have a, another discussion about the other default? It depends whether we think that at some point we're gonna regret changing it away from minus one, I guess. Well, it's just the default value for for Stanislav. I hope I'm not saying it wrong. It's just the default value which is used for the newly created topic, right? Yes. So I think <laughs> getting back to minus one is not that complicated. I mean, I, I wonder, I mean, it seems to be clear that we, we all think that running with one is not a good idea. I wonder if maybe the first step is to like have a warning or something. So are you running with one, you know, just uh, if you know what you're doing, uh, great. Uh, if you don't know, you may want to change it. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the problem, right? The users don't really know what it's used for. It's, it's not the topic the user created. It's basically the topic streams it created for itself. So like if they are running it with one replica, it's pretty much that they will come back to us asking whether that's okay. And for what it's worth, it's, I think it's, if we think that running it with one replica is fine, then it's totally fine to just tell the users that one is sufficient there and that they don't have to worry about it, right? I see, okay. It's because here we just inherit whatever the, bro the cluster default. And, uh... Sorry, I don't, I, I don't have the background the ticket, I'm just commenting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so what I think makes it special here is that it's not the user topic which the user created. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's, it's something basically what the streams the topic operator creates and use completely internally for itself. It's basically, so to store some information about the topics it's using Kafka streams and the streams API basically creates this change log topic there. So that's basically what we are talking about here. But I, I think if you were a regular user, so if in this case we're picking one, I mean, the default for the cluster is one. So if a user creates a topic without specifying a replication factor, they would get one as well. Yeah. So, and, uh, so yeah, in case there's more broker, I think it's always like, uh, 
it's rarely something you really want to do. Yeah, but that's then the separate question, right? That's then not necessarily about this PR, yeah, but yeah. it's more about what Tom raised about whether we should set the default to something else. I think I like this approach of just uh, you know just looking over the defaults, so, uh, and then you can rely on minus one everywhere. This is definitely the direction Kafka is heading with within now in three zero streams default to minus one for reflection factor. Just so. Uh, um, like the the cluster admin sets the, the default values, and as the user in your application, you don't really have to worry about the uh, prediction factor. You just say, "Give me a topic." Uh, so whoever set up the cluster knows better what what to do. I think that's very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> in many cases, it's the same person, but you know. Yeah. In case it's a managed service, you know, as an operator, you can set three and all users will create three automatically. Tom, Paolo, Stanislav, so what do you think then? Um, I think we should definitely open an issue to explore um, changing the default replication factor in a cluster, because I do think that makes sense, especially in the context of Kafka 3.0 changing its defaults. I think it, you know, it's, you could just sort of, um, you know, now's a good time to do that, basically. So should we keep the PR open then until we decide that or? I think so, yeah. So will everyone think about it so that we can decide it next time? Okay, let's move forward. Time is running. Next one is five, five, six, four. Tom, I guess you are still working on this? Yeah, this has turned into a rewrite of the um, Kafka roller, which um, is a difficult piece of code. Um, I'm trying to make it less difficult and more understandable. So. Um, Go on. So Sorry. this this PR can probably be closed for now um, because I'll be opening something very different. Uh, up to you, really. I don't have problem if it's open. I mainly wanted to cl clarify if that's something for zero twenty six or beyond that. Um, what's the time frame for zero twenty six? I should Two know. Two weeks I know, ago. Two weeks ago. Um, But realistically, I don't think we will have RC before Monday next week or something like that. It's quite a big change. So if I'm loath to say it should be in 0.26, um, if it's you know not going to get a decent amount of testing before release. OK, so. Set it to zero twenty seven, and if you want to close it, you close it. If not, yep. you can keep it open. Yeah. I think it's it's actually not draft, but yeah, I know we are working on it. 
Okay, next one, five, four, six. And I think some evil people did the reviews. Yeah, so I, I just had the uh, pass before the call. And uh, yeah, just a couple of needs, but uh, I approved that PR. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I really raised it so that it gets the reviews. So unless someone has something else, then I guess that's it. Yeah, and that's the same for the second one. And the same applies uh, for the second one, yeah. Yeah. Standard, can you have a look at it as well? Yeah, it's the PR where Kafka is upgraded to 2.8. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Paolo had some uh, concerns about uh, why the IMQP uh, test stopped working. Because uh, it seems IMQP connection keep the topic recreated in tests and it didn't happen before. So uh, maybe we should uh, do some more investigation there. But otherwise, uh, I'm okay with this PR. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so what does that mean? Should we merge it or? Or yeah, I think do you we, want to do some more? Do you want to do some more investigation? Uh, I was having a trip. I think sure. no. I I think that for now we can merge it. I I just suggested that yeah, it was strange that this NQP closing connection. It's a long time that I don't touch the NQP related code. Um, was stopping to work. Uh, but for now I would merge and uh, and then maybe we can open an issue about more investigation on, on why this connection was needed. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we have the two usual suspects, which we are discussing for three months. And that's about the roller, I guess. Keep it for next time or Okay, I guess. Sorry, was that me? Well, that's the that's the thing about the Kafka roller and yeah, uh, I I need to I I said last time um, you weren't here, Jakob, you were away, but I said last time I was going to deal with that, and I haven't. Um, I shall definitely do it this time. Um, sorry about that. Okay, and then. Uh, we have one open proposal uh, about a custom authentication type. So it would be great if everyone has a look at it. I think so far only me and Tom uh, had a look at it. Yeah, I will do. Okay, next point on the agenda, annual review results. So we got the annual review approved, but we got following comment. We are encouraged to, DOC encourages maintainer onboarding process as part of governance improvements. Anyone knows what that means? I think you've got to have a doc explaining how you're gonna welcome new, uh, new maintainers. Well, not just welcome, but also I think a little bit more of a um, a description about sort of how people can work towards becoming a maintainer um, as well, I would imagine, is, is kind of part of it. Because I think at the moment, um, we've not really got anything describing that. And so, um, you know, people that might be contributing might not really sort of see that there's a, a path for them to becoming a maintainer. And, you know, obviously sort of might find that um, off-putting or discouraging and um, you know if we can have something somewhere that explains that then you know they can see that there is that pathway um, for them if they you know if they're interested. So do we want to add that to the governance itself or? Probably it needs to be in the governance uh, repo 
um, whether it's in the actual governance.md, I'm not sure because I think you know that I'm personally of the opinion that you know the the smaller that is, the sort of uh, the clearer it is in terms of you know sort of how things work in terms of uh, you know the procedures basically. Um, I don't see this being something procedural. It's it's more sort of extra information that's sort of uh, describing how you know that's going to work, but it's not really actually sort of part of the rules, as it were. Yeah, I also so what it seemed to me that they are really asking for is something what's called sometimes contributor letter, which kind of describes a bit more the roles and the path and so on. So I guess, yeah, that kind of covers it as well. Uh, so any volunteers to look into that? I can have a look if you want as someone who isn't a maintainer and therefore can hopefully gather the information as what you'd want to know someone on the outside i guess i think that would be great actually having the some you know not exactly an outsiders but certainly a sort of a, a fresh perspective um yeah. from somebody you know sort of coming from the outside um that would be a really great start even if it you know even if the outcome of that isn't um what the sort of contributor ladder should be but just you know what what we need to do a clearer sort of picture yeah okay that sounds like a start Anyone, anything else to this? Okay, then the next point is, uh, I don't have really any much content about it. Uh, we have tomorrow the call to discuss the, the topics, but next week we have the KubeCon office hours. So just a reminder uh for everyone so that we plan with it especially paulo and tom who will be doing most of the answering of the questions i mean tom bentley tom cooper so you don't have to be that scared i've i've agreed to something in the past that i now can't remember what it was but i'm guessing from uh Jakob's delight that it's onerous. No, so I think I guess we should follow the same format as we did last time. Uh, to have some kind of prepared questions and mix it with the questions from the from the audience. I hope it will be more like the last KubeCon, where we had a lot of questions and a lot of audience because that keeps us busy and not like the Kafka summit of his hours, which tend to be not that many <laughs> questions and uh, not that many attendees and more focus on the content we have to deliver. But yeah, let's, let's discuss that tomorrow, but just remember that it's next Friday evening. Yeah, it's in my calendar. Yeah, I hope in Paulos as well. And I think, yep. I don't know, Jakub, uh, you said that you might not be able to join, so. Yeah, that's correct. There's a small chance that I will be able to join, but uh, yeah, I can, I can register and we will see. Yeah, that's actually a good point, Paolo, Tom. Make sure that you register for this, for this event in this link. Yeah, I already done, schedule. but uh, I'm just an attendee, so I guess that they will send some more information for the speakers. 
No, I don't think so. Did we got some some URL where to connect? Uh, you already shared the URL on the on the Slack channel, right? Yeah, but that was the URL where you should register, or yes. But did there we got a... did we got already some URL with the with the connection string? I don't think we got that yet, or you mean uh, via email? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. So if I remember correctly, how it worked last uh, time, we will just get some link for this video conferencing platform which they are using to join there, and then uh, there will be uh, uh, someone from CNCF. I don't know, Tin Matienzo or or someone else who will be there and will kind of make us speakers based on the based on the names. So I don't think there will be any special link for us as uh, speakers. Yeah, I think that I remember the same. So we have just to wait for now. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, it's on Friday, right? And so yeah, it's on, I don't think I got the link yet, but I think it's still time for that. I think we might get to it. Uh, we might get it next week. Yeah, let what me I just have to know. For? Sorry? What do I have to register for? I'm just searching through my email, trying to figure out if I've already accepted uh, it or not. Check the check the streams and maintainers channel on Slack. I share there the, the link okay. for the registration. Okay. That cool, might thanks, be the yeah. easiest way to check it because there's not that much traffic there. And uh, Jakub, can you ping me somehow when you got an email? Because it's quite often that I have a problem getting emails from CNCF when it's part of conferences or things like that. Well, you mark them as spam and then you're surprised yeah, maybe. you have to throw that spam. <laughs> maybe it's possible, so. OK, so that's for the KubeCon. And of course, everyone else is invited to join us at ND as well. And that's it for the agenda today. Does anyone have anything else? Okay, so I guess that's it. Thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.